Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to STI Suomi Torah International Weekly Torah Reading and Discussion with Chris from the Scatterlings and James from the Fiery Faith Ministries. We are on week 35. The Torah portion is Naso, Lift Up, reading from Numbers chapter 4, verse 21 through the end of chapter 7. This is the longest up this point. Please bear with us a little longer. Let's begin. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome, everyone. Great to be here again on our Sabbath day, the day of rest, the day that Yahuwah made for man so that we can be restored in his truth, in his word. And we love looking into it a little bit deeper, fellowshipping and just being able to enjoy the unity of each other, the love that we have for each other and the love that we have for the father and his son. So let's go ahead and have a prayer before we get into our reading. Father Most High, thank you for this opportunity once again to share your instructions, the words that you gave for man to follow, to be obedient to you, to seek your kingdom, to ultimately obtain everlasting life, salvation. We want to continue to shine the light on your word, guiding others to the narrow path, continuing to seek that for ourselves. We want to be found worthy. We want to be allowed into your kingdom one day. We're so thankful for the opportunity to share this word around the world. May you open eyes and ears to those seeking the truth, seeking you. Restore the relationships with the lost and the broken. When there was no way in sight, you parted the sea for Yasharel. We want you to continue to part the sea in our journey perform the miracles that are yet to be seen. We're so thankful for the healing and the things that you provide, the blessings that you bestow upon our lives. Be with this message today. And we pray all of this in your son, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. All right, as Daniel said, this is our longest Torah portion of the entire cycle. So we'll get through it here. We're going to start in Numbers 4. Verse 21, and Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Take also the sum of the sons of Gershon throughout the houses of their fathers by their families. From thirty years old and upward until fifty years old shall you number them. All that enter in to perform the service, to do the work in the tabernacle of the assembly. This is the service of the families of the Gershonim to serve and for burdens, and they shall bear the curtains of the tabernacle and the tabernacle of the assembly, his coverings and the covering of the antelope skins that is above upon it and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the assembly and at the hangings of the court and the hanging for the door of the gate of the court, which is by the tabernacle and by the altar round about and at their cords and all the instruments of their service, and at all that is made for them, so shall they serve. At the appointment of Ahron and his sons shall be all the service of the sons of the Gershonim, in all their burdens and in all their service, and ye shall appoint unto them in charge at all their burdens. This is the service of the families of the sons of Gershon in the tabernacle of the assembly, and their charge shall be under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Ahron, the priest. As for the sons of Merari, you shall number them after their families by the house of their fathers. From thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, shall you number them. Every one that enters into the service to do the work of the tabernacle of the assembly. And this is the charge of their burden according to all their service in the tabernacle of the assembly, the boards of the tabernacle and the bars thereof and the pillars thereof and sockets thereof and the pillars of the court round about and their sockets and their pins and their cords with all their instruments and with all their service. And by name, ye shall reckon the instruments of the charge of their burden. This is the service of the families of the sons of Merari according to all their service, in the tabernacle of the assembly, under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Ahron, the priest. And Moshe and Ahron, and the chief of the assembly, 
numbered the sons of the Kohathim after their families and after the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, every one that enters into the service for the work in the tabernacle of the assembly. And those that were numbered of them by their families were two thousand seven hundred and fifty. These were they that were numbered of the families of the Kohathim, all that might do service in the tabernacle of the assembly, which Moshe and Ahron did number according to the commandment of Yahuwah by the hand of Moshe. And those that were numbered of the sons of Gershon throughout their families and by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, every one that enters into the service for the work in the tabernacle of the assembly, even those that were numbered of them throughout their families by the house of their fathers were two thousand and six hundred and thirty. These are they that were numbered of the families of the sons of Gershon and of all that might do service in the tabernacle of the assembly, whom Moshe and Ahron did number according to the commandment of Yahuwah. And those that were numbered of the families of the sons of Merari, throughout their families by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, everyone that entered into the service for the work in the tabernacle of the assembly, even those that were numbered of them after their families were three thousand and two hundred. These be those that were numbered of the families of the sons of Merari, whom Moshe and Ahron numbered according to the word of Yahuwah by the hand of Moshe. All those that were numbered of the Levaim, whom Moshe and Ahron and the chief of Yasharel numbered after their families and after the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, everyone that came to do the service of the ministry and the service of the burden in the tabernacle of the assembly. Even those that were numbered of them were eight thousand and five hundred and fourscore. According to the commandment of Yahuwah, they were numbered by the hand of Moshe, every one according to his service and according to his burden. Thus were they numbered of him, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. We can continue to see the order and the organization of Yahuwah's plan through the different parts and pieces were assigned to various groups and sections. We also have age limits. You know, we discussed uh, in past tour portions, those that were fit to serve in the army for battle, 20 years old and upward. But here we're discussing those that were able to perform service in the tabernacle were 30 to 50. So we can see Obviously, Yahweh did not think that a 20-year-old was ready or maybe mature enough to do these services in the tabernacle. Of course, we discussed the various groups, the four divisions within the Levites. The Gershonim were responsible for carrying the Mishkan's woven articles, and they dwell on the west side of the Mishkan. The Kohathim, they were charged with carrying the sacred objects of the Mishkan and dwell on the south side. The Merarim were dedicated to carrying the wooden parts of the Mishkan, as well as the ropes and sockets used for the curtain of the courtyard and dwelt on the north side. And then the Kohanim, they were responsible for performing all the sacrifices and other rituals on behalf of all Yasharel and dwelt on the east side. I just love seeing the order and the plan. And we can see throughout this, of course, we start with, and Yahuwah spoke to El Moshe, but then we also see it's saying, according to the commandment of Yahuwah, Moshe did. So these commands, these words, everything was ordered by Yahuwah. Moshe had the power to make up his own things, his own ideas or plans, but he relied on Yahuwah. That's something to keep in consideration when we have a platform or power, you know, to still listen to the word of Yahuwah, let him be in control, not get prideful and want to take that credit or power of our own, but allow Yahuwah to be the one in charge. Let his will and his way 
be our path. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, once again, James, as you said, the, they, they were, there were different duties for the different people, very similar to uh, what Romans 12 tells us. Uh, in Romans 12, we see, I beseech you, therefore, the brethren, by the mercies of God, that he present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy, acceptable to you, Noah, which is your reasonable service. So we see, like, there is a truth in, in, in the New Testament as well of this thought. And we are priests and uh, you know, uh, which 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 is spoken of in Revelation one. Um, so uh, this service, um, I'll just read on a little bit further in Romans twelve, because it does make sense in connotation to this. It says, "And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that he may prove what that is good." An acceptable and perfect will of Yah. For I say, through grace given unto me, that every man is more among you, not to think so of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to Yahweh has dealt every man a measure of belief. For we have mem many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we being many, are one body in Mashiach, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Where the prophecy let us prophesy according to the portion of belief, or ministry let us wait on our ministry, or he that teaches on teaching, or he that exhausts on exhortation. He that gives, let him do it with simplicity. And he that rules with diligence, he that shows mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without dissimulation. Um, you know, I'm not going to carry on. The point is that we have these different gifts and we have uh, different offices. And each one of us cannot say, the toe cannot say to the head, we're not need of you or the mouth. Uh, so it is the same that we are all in need of one another and no one is esteemed better than the other. So uh, I think that's a beautiful unifying message to the body, right? Um, especially in our communities. We, are, we might be a secluded community of people right now, but we are part of a bigger body. And we must not forget about that. We must not forget about our brothers and sisters and that everybody has a certain role to play. So uh, I think that's, that's, that's what I have to say about that. Um, Eileen, I see has got her hand on, uh, hand up. Um, Eileen, what, you, what would you like to add? <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, I just, I just wanted to ask a question here. In several times... <clears throat> James mentioned from 30 years old until 50. Okay. So my question is, and, and it's mentioned several times. So this was really important. So if you were below 30 or over 50, you couldn't do service. Am I right? Yes. Okay. So it was only that 20 or, you know, that 20 year span. So does that you mean know, that? Uh, Eileen? Luckily, yeah. you're not over. Luckily, you're not over fifty, but I am. And I so, am too. <laughs> I, I wasn't. I wasn't saying that, Eileen. I was trying. To That's okay. That. <laughs> I guess my question the, the is. Point is the point. The point that I'm trying to make is, you know, you don't want to be standing in the temple wondering why you're there. <laughs> no, that was just a joke. But anyway, yeah. Um, the 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 time of adulthood or the age of adulthood was thirty years old. And um, and the age of uh, service completed in the temple that is was fifty. Okay, is that something that we should be thinking about? I mean, like today, 
it's never it's not like that in the world today obviously and it's not about the temple or anything it's just in the world i'm talking about is that something that that maybe should be considered i don't you know, know what i'm saying I, i'm not i'm not going to voice an opinion on that however because that means then i shouldn't be sitting here but um <laughs> But uh, on a serious note, I think it's, it's an excellent point because you have to make sure there's somebody being taught and being, uh, and being put into place to take over. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's our problem in the world today is that we have leaders that don't know when to stop, right? Um, exactly. Not gonna, we're not going to mention any names, but, you know, this is the point, you know, um, it's kind of uh, foolish not to have your com uh, and, and, and anyway, look, you train up people in the way they should go and they take over from you. So I think you have a fresh, continuous uh, 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 flow of leadership. And I think that's very important. Yeah, I uh, think James, James, have you got something to add there? I think we can all look back on our lives and, and realize, you know, yes, when we became 20 years old, we became an adult, but it wasn't more maybe until the thirties where we really matured and started obtaining that wisdom. And I know Yahweh sees that from all of us. And he knew from the beginning that those age difference are a big deal. Um, and like you spoke, you know, there's many that have taken advantage of their platform, their power, their place in, you know, government, things like that, ruling in a seat for well beyond their years. Uh, and I don't think that was Yah's intention by any means. Um, mm. And plus, you know, we want to be, you know, fresh. And I think people can get stagnant when they hold a, a place for too long. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, that's that's great. I think uh, James, you can continue there. All right, chapter five. I love how each chapter starts with "And Yahweh spoke unto El Moshe, saying." We see this time and time again throughout each Torah reading. It's truly wonderful, knowing that these words came from our Father in heaven. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Command the children of Yasharel that they put out of the camp every leper and every one that has an issue, and whosoever is defiled by the dead. Both male and female shall ye put out, without the camp shall ye put them, that they defile not their camps, in the midst thereof I dwell. And the children of Yasharel did so, and put them out without the camp, as Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe. So did the children of Yasharel. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, when a man or woman shall commit any sin that men commit, to do a trespass against Yahweh, and that person be guilty. Then they shall confess their sin, which they have done, and he shall recompense his trespass with the principle thereof, and add unto it the fifth part thereof, and give it unto him against whom. He has trespassed. But if the man have no kinsman to recompense the trespass unto, let the trespass be recompensed unto Yahuwah, even to the priest beside the ram of the atonement, whereby an atonement shall be made for him. And every offering of all the holy things of the children of Yasharel, which they bring unto the priest, shall be his. And every man's hallowed things shall be his, whatsoever any man gives the priest it shall be his. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, and say unto them, If any man's woman go aside and commit a trespass against him, and a man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her man, and be kept close, and she be defiled, and there be no witness against her, neither she be taken with the manner, and the ruach of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his woman, and she be defiled. Or if the ruach of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his woman, and she be not defiled, then shall the man bring his woman unto the priest, 
and he shall bring her offering for her, the tenth part of an ephah of barley meal. He shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon. For it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, bringing iniquity to remembrance. And the priest shall bring near her near, and set her before Yahuwah. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel. And of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put it into the water. And the priest shall set the women before Yahuwah and uncover the woman's head and put it the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. And the priest shall charge her by an oath and say unto the woman, If no man have lain with you, and if you have not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of your man, be free from this bitter water that causes the curse. But et, if you have gone aside to another instead of your man, and if you be defiled, and some man have lain with you beside your man, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. And the priest shall say unto the woman, Yahweh, make you a curse and an oath among your people. When Yahweh makes your thigh to rot and your belly to swell, and this water that causes the curse shall go into your bowels to make your belly to swell and your thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. And the priest shall write these curses in a sephir, and he shall blot them out with the bitter water. And he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causes the curse, and the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand, Eth, and we shall wave and shall wave the wave offering before Yahuwah, and offer it upon the altar. And the priest shall take a handful of the offering, even the memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar, and afterward shall cause the woman to drink the water. And when he has made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled and have done trespass against her man, that the water that causes the curse shall enter into her, and become bitter, and her belly shall swell, and her thigh shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among her people. And if the woman be not defiled, but be clean, then she shall be free, and shall conceive seed. This is the Torah of jealousies, when a woman goes aside to another instead of her man, and is defiled, or when the Ruach of jealousy comes upon him, and he be jealous over his woman, and shall set the woman before Yahuwah, and the priest shall execute upon her, et all this Torah. Then shall the man be guiltless from his iniquity, and this woman shall bear her iniquity. So we start this chapter really by discussing defilement of the camp of the body of Yasharel. Yahweh expects and demands and will only accept a clean body, a pure camp in this situation. So all of those that were afflicted, whether it be through leprosy or those of unclean statute, they must be removed from the camp. And I think that's still an example to us as we are the body of Messiah. He is the head in order to be a part of that body, to be accepted and received whether it be our offerings, our praises, those things that we give forth to the Most High, they must come from a pure and clean heart. We don't want to become defiled. We know there's many ways to become defiled, whether it's what we eat, what we bring into our body through our eyes, our ears, even what we speak. Those are all ways to become defiled, even touching a dead body, speaking hatred, death, of another we are to love our brother and sister just as we love yahuwah first and of course then jealousy is played here you know sometimes jealousy in a marriage is revealed to be justified but other times it is found to be false and yahuwah gave yasharel a way to deal with this spirit of jealousy this unusual law is evidence that yahuwah does not want couples to live in an ongoing state of jealousy. So he mm -hmm. gave a ceremony to resolve jealous feelings in a marriage.
by either proving them or disproving them. Mm -hmm. And I think we have all experienced jealousy in our lives. We know how destructive and toxic that can be on a relationship, whether it be with our spouse or with anyone else. Ultimately, it will destroy the relationship if it is not resolved and put to an end. And Yahweh knew that, and he provided a very specific way to get to the bottom of that and prove you're either innocent or you're guilty. A fair judge is Yahweh, and we can always rely on that. You know, we're used to crooked and wicked judges that take bribes and, you know, power. Yahweh is not that way. He is fair and just and always will be. And he will judge in the end. And he knows our every move, every thought, every word. And we will have to account for that one day. But it will be a fair trial. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it makes me think, why is it only the woman that's mentioned here and not the man? And in a way, it's just what you said. It's that it's actually speaking about Yah and his people. And Yah is a jealous elf. And so when his people are going whoring after other gods, that's what he's feeling. He's feeling this jealousy. And so we get this, um, this piece of scripture uh, that they tried to um, catch Yahusha with when the woman was caught in adultery, only bringing the woman in and the man was missing. And uh, you think, well, why is that? It's because Yah says that I also don't condemn you. So go and sin no more. So, um, you know, I, I, I know that Previously in the Torah, it says, do not break wedlock and the laws go, they, they stem to the man and to the woman. Um, it's, just, it's just funny that in this piece, they're only talking about the, um, the judgment upon the woman. Um, and uh, so I feel that there's a little bit more to this um, and that it's about Yahusha being jealous for us. Uh, for Yahweh being jealous for us. So, um, but yeah, uh, uh, amazing thing that the ground or the or the the uh, dirt of the dust of the tabernacle uh, is mixed into the water, and um, and we get this, uh, and hopefully we do get to the to the Torah to the Besorah portion today. But we have the same thing that Yahusha writes in the dust of his finger um, in that scenario. Um, so, you know, from dust to dust, we will return kind of thing, you know, from dust you made and to dust you will return eventually. Um, and, and yeah, so it's, it's, it's this whole, um, you know, don't defile yourself, especially um, with with another you know that that's the gift that Yah gives us one of the gifts that he gives us of faithfulness you know in 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 relationships uh is to learn to be faithful faithful doesn't mean that you have multi wives or multi partners it means that you have one and you are faithful and uh, that's the blessing of Yah is to remain faithful because that's something that He's teaching us. Um, it's a it's it's a it's a heavenly um, uh, it's a it's a heavenly uh, thought. It's a heavenly program that you've got to get into your mind to be faithful. And I think. Uh, this is one of the smaller ways of practicing faithfulness is having uh, uh, one uh, one spouse and not being and uh, not breaking wedlock. So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, this Torah of jealousy definitely yeah. saved women who were innocent yet falsely accused because of the wrath of a jealous husband, as we or we'll discuss in the Basura. We see that example 
throughout the scriptures that it happens. And Yah wanted to offer that protection to the woman against a jealous husband, you know, and Amen. we see that this offering was to be bitter because either the wife would be found guilty of adultery or the husband would be found guilty of unfounded suspicion. So there wasn't anything sweet about this offering that was given like it would typically be. Right. All right, chapter six. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Natsir, to separate themselves unto Yahuwah, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. All the days of his separation, he shall eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernels even to the husk. And the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head, until the days to be fulfilled, in the which he separates himself unto Yahuwah, he shall be holy, and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. All the days that he separates himself unto Yahuwah, he shall come at no dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father, or for his mother, or for his brother, or for his sister, when they die, because the consecration of his Elohim is upon his head." All the days of his separation, he is holy unto Yahuwah. And if any man die very suddenly by him, he has defiled the head of his consecration. Then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day he shall shave it. And on the eighth day he shall bring two turtles, or two young pigeons, to the priest, to the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for an ascending smoke offering, and make an atonement for him, for that he sinned by the dead, and shall hollow his head that same day. And he shall consecrate unto Yahuwah the days of his separation, and shall bring a lamb of the first year for a trespass offering. But the days that were before shall be lost, because his separation was defiled. And this is the Torah of the Netzir, when the days of his separation are fulfilled. He shall be brought unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and he shall offer his offering unto Yahuwah, one he lamb of the first year without blemish, for an ascending smoke offering, and one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish, for a sin offering, and one ram without blemish, for peace offerings, and a basket of matzah, cakes of fine flour mingled with oil, and wafers of matzah anointed with oil and their oblation, and their drink offerings. And the priest shall bring them before Yahuwah, and shall offer his sin offering, and his ascending smoke offering. And he shall offer the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings unto Yahuwah, with the basket of matzah. The priest shall offer also his oblation, and his drink offering. And the Natsir shall shave the head of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and shall take the hair of the head of his separation, and put it in the fire, which is under the sacrifice of the peace offerings. And the priest shall take the sodden shoulder of the, hand, the ram, and one matzah cake out of the basket, and one matzah wafer, and shall put them upon the hands of the netzir, after the hair of his separation is shaved, is shaven. And the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before Yahuwah. This is the this is holy for the priest, with the wave breast and heave shoulder, and after that the Natsir may drink wine. This is the Torah of the Natsir, who has vowed, and of his offering unto Yahuwah for his separation, beside that, that his hand shall get according to the vow which he vowed, so he must do after the Torah of his separation. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the El Aharon, and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Yasharel, saying unto them, Yahuwah bless you and guard you. 
Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Yasharel, and I will bless them. Hallelujah. What a special verse to end this chapter on. Is we want Yahweh's name written upon us so that we will receive his blessing. We want to seek after him and his kingdom. We want to be obedient to his commandments, guarding them and doing them and teaching them to others, passing those down from generation to generation. As you had mentioned with the priesthood, you know, continuing to pass that responsibility down to the younger generation so that they can serve their time, that they can be in the service of Yahuwah. Also, the Nazarite vow, really a way to even be set apart at a whole nother level, you know, to refrain from strong drink, to refrain from defiling yourself. You know, we all strive to honor and guard the covenant without breaking it, but we are all human. We all will sin and fall short of that glory, but it is a reminder to strive to be set apart, to stay pure and holy for the kingdom and for the body of Messiah. There was one thing I've read a few times now. Uh, I enjoy reading a commentary of the Torah from Jeff Binner. He is very well versed in the Hebrew and shares great understanding on the various Hebrew words and letters. And he was breaking down the priestly blessing, uh, the various aspects of it, you know, blessing and guarding and shining his face upon us and the countenance and peace. And so he reworded it a little bit different, but I really enjoy seeing it in this aspect as well. He has it here. Yahweh will kneel before you presenting gifts and he will guard you with a hedge of protection. Yahweh will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards you, bringing order and he will provide you with love, sustenance and friendship. Yahweh will lift up the wholeness of his being and look upon you and he will set you in place all you need to be whole and complete. I think that's just a beautiful promise of the blessings that he has in store for his people, for his remnant. Hmm. Amen. Right, so um, we'll continue with chapter 7. And it came to pass on that day, Moshe had fully set up at the tabernacle and had anointed it and sanctified it and at all the instruments thereof, both there at the altar and at all the vessels thereof. And he had anointed them and sanctified them. And the priests of Yashorel, the heads of the house of their fathers, who were the princes of the tribes were that were over the, and were over them that were numbered offered. And they brought eth the offering before Yahweh, six covered wagons, twelve, uh, six covered wagons, twelve oxen, a wagon, or two of the or two of the princes, and for each an ox. They brought them before the tabernacle. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Take it of them that they may be that they may be due to do at the service of all the tabernacle of the assembly. And you shall give them unto the Levim, to every man according to his service. And Moshe took at the wagons and at the oxen. And gave them unto the Levim. Eth two wagons and eth four oxen he gave unto the sons of Gershon. 
according to their service. And if four wagons, and if eight oxen, he gave unto the sons of Merai, according unto their service, under the hand of Ithimar, the son of Aaron, the priest. But unto the sons of Korath he gave none, because the service of the sanctuary belonged unto them, and it was that they should bear upon their shoulders. And the princes offered it for the dedicating of the altar in every day that was anointed. Even the princes offered it their offering before the altar. And Yahweh said unto El Moshe, They shall offer it their offering, each prince on his day, for the dedicating of the altar. And he that offered it of his offering the first day was Nachshon, the son of Aminidab, the tri of the tribe of Yehuda. And his offering was one silver charge, the weight thereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. Both of them were full of fine flour mingled with oil for a, an oblation. One spoon of 10 shekels of gold full of incense, <clears throat> one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year, year for an ascending smoke offering. <clears throat> one kid of the goats for a sin offering and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five ram, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Nachshon of the son of, son of Aminidab. On the second day, Nathaniel, the son of Tsuar, the prince of Yishika, did offer. He offered for his offering one silver charger, the weight thereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering. One <coughs> Or for oblation, one spoon of gold, ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for ascending smoke offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Nathaniel, son of Suor. On the third day, Eliab, the son of Shechelon, prince of the children of Zebulun, did the weight there, uh, sorry, his offering was one silver charge, the weight thereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering one gold spoon, golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering, one kid of the goats of sin offering for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year was the offering of Eliab, the son of Helon. On the fourth day, Elitzer, the son of Shedeur, the prince of the children of Reuben, did offer. His offering was the silver charges and the weight of 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them uh, full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation, one gold spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt for a oblation. One kid of the goats for a sin offering and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Elitzur for the son of Shedeur. <clears throat> On the fifth day, Shelehumil, the son of Surud Shaddai, the prince 
of the children of Shimeon did offer. His offering was one silver charger, the weight thereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, after the shekel, shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of 10 shekel, shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Shemuel, the son of Shuritziadiah. <coughs> On the sixth day, Elikaf, uh, the son of Duel, the prince of the children of God, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight of 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour, <coughs> mingled with oil for an ablation. One golden spoon of 10 shekels, full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Elikaf, the son of Duel. On the seventh day, Elishama, the son of Amihud, the prince of the children of Ephraim, offered. His offering was one of the silver charger, weight thereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation. One golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense. One young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering. One kid of the goats of sin offering and for a sacrifice of peace offerings. Two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Elishama, the son of Amiud. On the eighth day offered Gamiel, the son of Parachur, the prince of the children of Manasseh. His offering was one silver charger of a weight of 130 shekels and one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation. One golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense. One young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering. One kid of the goats for a sin offering. And for a sacrifice of peace offerings. Two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Gamaliel, the son of Pedachur. And on the ninth day... <coughs> Avedidam, the son of Gideoni, the prince of the children of the Benjamin, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight thereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation. One golden spoon of 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb the first year, for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Abidan, the son of Gideoni. On the tenth day, Ashiezer, the son of Amishadai, the prince of the children of Dan, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight thereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation, one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of the incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering, one kid of the goats of sin for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering 
of Achiezer, the son of Amishadad, Shaddai, on the 11th day, Pagliel, the son of Orkam, the prince of the children of Asher, offered his offering was one silver charger, weight thereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation. One golden spoon of 10 shekels or full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a splendid smoke offering. And for a sacrifice of a peace offering, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Pali, uh, Pag El, El, the son of Okram. On the twelfth day, Akiaira, the son of Elan, the prince of the children of Naphtali, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight thereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering. <coughs> One golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense. One young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering. One kid of the goats of the sin offering. And for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, and five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Akchiaira, the son of Elian. This was the dedication of the altar and the day when it was anointed by the princes of Yasharel. Twelve charges of silver, twelve silver bowls, twelve spoons of gold, each charger of silver weighing a hundred and thirty shekels, each bowl seventy. All the silver vessels weighing two thousand and four hundred shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. The golden spoons were twelve of incense weighing ten shekels apiece. After the shekel of the sanctuary, all the gold of the spoons was 120 shekels. The oxen of the burnt offering were 12 bullocks, 12 rams, uh, sorry, 12 bullocks, and the rams were 12, and the, uh, and the lambs of the first year were 12, and their meat offering, and the kids of the goats for sin offering, 12, and all the oxen of the sacrifice of peace offerings were 20 and 4 bullocks, the rams, 60, the he-goats, 60, the lambs of the first year, 60. This was the dedication of the altar. After that, it was anointed. When Moshe was gone into the tabernacle of the assembly to speak with him. Then he heard at the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat that was upon the ark of the testimony between the two cherubim. And he spoke unto him. <clears throat> so, um, here in, in, in verse 9, we see an interesting th difference, maybe, between uh, these. And this was for the Korath, the sons of Korath. Um, he gave none because the service of the sanctuary belonged unto them, that was that they should bear upon their shoulders. So we know there were certain uh, furniture, temple furniture pieces that were bore on the shoulders of the Levim, such as the Ark of the Testament uh, and, the, um, and the, the, the table of the burning of the incense, the, the altar and the showbread table. And these uh, were both, these were in the inner court of the tabernacle, but these had wooden staves in which they had to be carried upon the shoulders. And uh, we see the mistake uh, that was later made by David when he brought the Ark of the Covenant, uh, when he was transporting it, rather, um, that he put it on an ox wagon. Um, and Uzzah put out his hand and he was pulverized. So that was a big mistake um, made by David because um, they, they, they did not read the Torah properly 
to, uh, to move it. And which reiterates Yah's ideas or Yah's way of who should do certain things in the tabernacle. Um, even unto hundreds of years later, um, it was still uh, pertinent. It, it hadn't changed. Yah doesn't change. This is the way you do it, right? You carry it upon your shoulder, and uh, which wasn't done. So it shows us in, a, in, in today's terms <coughs> that that we read just now in Romans 12, um, that there are certain duties for certain people and we need to keep them so. Um, and, I, and I know in, in ministry, for instance, a lot of people have gone astray by working outside their, um, their giftings um, and their calling, if you like, um, and then losing it, right? They, they, they lose the plot. And I think that's the same. Um, I don't want to uh, try and proclaim any judgment upon people. Uh, it's just that normally Yah has, uh, Yah has given you um, a certain talent. And normally that's what your passion is. So um, hone that, I think. Hone the passion that Yah has given you. Uh, and walk in it and love what you're doing. And, uh, you know, I think pride comes be before a fall uh, to a lot of us. And uh, that's maybe something that we must just be aware of, that um, when we think we're too smart, when we think we're too clever, when we think we know more, uh, be careful because um, it's not about what you know, it's about what's in your heart that is important and what Yah sees. So I think that's something that we can also uh, think about. Yeah, I know Lee has shared many times when she first was getting into nursing, one of the head nurses always shared with her, when the day comes that you think you know it all is the day that you need to quit. Because that's a dangerous position to be in when you think you know it all. As we know with the Torah, with the scripture as a whole, there's always something new to learn, some right. understanding that hasn't been revealed yet, because in Yah's eyes, we weren't ready for it, maybe. And so now he's giving us more understanding. And so never be thinking that you know it all, that you can't teach me anything else. That's mm -hmm. a dangerous position to be in. Yeah. And James, I mean... Um... We were talking about the age of 50 and just joking about it. But, um, you know, since the age of 50, uh, I have learned so much uh, new things, right? So many new things I've learned. Um, but yet 50 over here was the time of the, end, the ending of your service in the tabernacle. Um, it doesn't mean that it's the ending of your service completely. It means that, uh, you know, you're moving on to a different uh, kind of service, and I think the elders had had a had a way uh, or a, a service of teaching, uh, but maybe not the service of actually the working. Um, so um, that just that in in this in this instance, and it might be different. I don't know uh, from today than then. Uh, we always learning. We creatures that will always carry on learning. Um, and it sort of reiterates the point, uh, as you were talking earlier on, when, when you're in your 20s, you think you know something until you get to your 30s, when you realize you didn't know anything. And <laughs> when you get to your 40s, you realize you still don't know much. And when you get to your 50s, you start forgetting. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a, it's it's like a uh, and I and I think that's maybe also the uh, the lesson of uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, it's not something you have to talk, partake in. Uh, to partake in love and to partake 
in uh, in service to Yah with your heart, your heart being pure in what you're doing is much more important than knowing uh, everything and not having it in your heart and not doing it from your heart. So I think that's something that we can maybe just uh, think about as we go forward. Um, because often we want to know too much, but we don't do anything about it in our lives. Uh, we want to know so much, but the love of Yah is not there for others. Um, you know, and, and, uh, and what we've learned today, the faithfulness doesn't help. I know everything, but I'm unfaithful to my wife, whom Yah has given me. Um, and with that, we can also understand this uh, uh, this honoring of the mother and the father, honoring of the parents, um, because we understand that it's not about your knowledge, uh, and 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 we all know that being parents that we've heard uh, at some other stage in our lives. But children who are growing up and then uh, working this out, uh, even children like us, we have now the ability to forgive and to love and to respect and honor uh, instead of criticize and, uh, and, and the negative uh, that, that proceeds from uh, mistakes in, in childhood maybe by parents or uh, whatever the case might be. They also people, they make mistakes, they don't know better. And if Yah can forgive those who are crucifying him, then we can forgive our own parents as well in the same manner. Um, they knew not what they did, for instance. If that's the case in, uh, in your family, in your life, um, uh, if it wasn't and you, your parents were great and are great. Well, that is such a blessing. You can honor, you can, you can, you can help others uh, also in this road, right? So I think that's very important, especially for today's time, because the word does say it's going to change these things, you know, children towards fathers and fathers towards children. These things are going to be improved and they're also going to be made worse in some cases. But uh, that's 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 where we have to practice love, and um, I think uh, once again something for us to keep in the back of our minds as we as we walking through this walk and trying to live out um, this word, right? Yeah, touching on the age of service from thirty to fifty. We know man and government has really pushed that out much further as far as age of retirement, you know, trying to squeeze out as much as they can, get out of you, the golden goose concept. But clearly, Yah saw that 50 was the fit age to retire from that service. And as you mentioned, not that you wouldn't have anything else to do, you know, you would be treated as the elder, the wise man that had been there, done that. And that is an important role to have. Everyone needs that influence in their life. Someone that has experienced that already that you can lean on and, and look to for guidance. And so I'm sure they still had a very important role within Yasharel and the camp. But I also see a connection maybe with the Jubilee. And we know that the Jubilee is freedom to be released. And so I think maybe that number there is also a release from your service. Unfortunately, we don't get that very often with our work career, but I think that is the age that Yah intended us to retire so that we could then enjoy those remaining years as our body, you know, gets older and isn't as strong to stay up through the night to keep the burning fire or deal with the, you know, animal sacrifices. That was a, a physical job that the priest had you know, to perform. And, you know, as you aged, your body may not be able to keep up as well. 
But I, th I found that number interesting with the Jubilee. Yeah. Very good point. Very good point. And well, of course, we'll have, yes, yeah, carry on. Sorry. sorry, I just wanted to share a verse out of Romans as well, discussing the mercy seat. Romans 3, 24 and 25, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Mashiach Yahusha, whom Elohim has set forth to be propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of Elohim. And so Paul describes Yahusha as propitiation, which can be translated as mercy seat or atoning sacrifice. And so we see that that seat, the mercy seat, represents Yahweh's presence and his provision for atonement, which was fully realized in Yahusha's sacrificial death, which these sacrificial systems were a foreshadowing of what was to come with the Messiah. Amen. Amen. And I think that is such a good point, James, is that everything that we read, we must remember that it's pointing to one, one event, one time, one person, in the person of Yahusha and, um, and the cross and the resurrection. And... Um, so everything else is is really taking a back seat, uh, if you will, because um, the ultimate is obviously the ultimate sacrifice. The ultimate uh, work is um, is what Yahusha came to do. Um, so that is that is the pillar of our faith. That is where we we are rooted in that. We are rooted in that. Um, uh, that root, if you like, who is Yahusha. And uh, so all these things become real to us. Remember, he was looking for a whole nation of kings and priests. And uh, that's what he makes us in Revelation 1, all of us kings and priests. And then you've got to work out, well, what did a priest own? What did he have land? And um, so that makes you free of the burden of holding on to things that don't belong to you. You know, um, it makes you free from the thought of this is my land. Well, no, it's not. It's Yah's land. And you have time to live in it. But if he decides that your time is up to live in that land, well, give it up because it is uh, Yah's decision, and not yours. And we are looking for another land that's coming from heaven. And that is our portion. So um, that is that is the, um, if you will, the prize of this whole calling is um, having a peace, uh, having a place uh, in that land that Yah is preparing for us. Hallelujah for that. So um, now we're going to the half Torah, which is Judges 13. And Eileen is going to read that for us. So thank you, Eileen. Hold on just a second. I had it and then I didn't have it. <laughs> oh, boy. After Joshua, huh? I'm I'm getting there. Yeah, after Joshua. I'm sorry. Before Samuel, in the second. If you're reading from this from the sefer, it's the last tab in the first row of tabs. Joshua. Okay, that was silly. 13. I am so sorry. No problem. And the children of Yashorel did evil again in the sight of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah delivered them into the land of the Palestine 40 years. And there was a certain man of Tesorah, 
of the family of the Danaim, whose name was Manoach, and his woman was barren and bore not. And the angel of Yahuwah appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, you are barren and bear not, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, beware, I pray you, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing, for lo, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazir unto Elohim from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Yasharel out of the hand of the Palestine. Then the woman came and told her man, saying, A man of Elohim came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of Elohim, very terrible. And I asked him not whence he was neither told me he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. And now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a netseer to Elohim from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoch entreated El Yahuwah and said, O Yahuwah, let the man of Elohim, which you did send, come again unto us, and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And Elohim hearkened to the voice of Manoach, and the angel of Elohim came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoach, her man, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran, and showed her man, and said unto him, Behold, the man has appeared unto me, that came to me unto me the other day. And Manoach rose, and went after his woman, and came to the man, and said unto him, Are you the man that spoke unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoach said, Now, let your words come to pass. How shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of Yahuwah said unto Manoach, of all that I have said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that comes of the vine, nor let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I have commanded her, let her guard. And Manoach said unto the angel of Yahuwah, I pray you, let us detain you until we shall have made ready a kid for you. And the angel of Yahuwah said unto Manoach, Though you detain me, I will not eat of your bread, and if you shall offer an ascending smoke offering, you must offer it unto Yahuwah. For Manoach knew not that he was an angel of Yahuwah. And Manoach said unto the angel of Yahuwah, What is your name, that when your saying comes to pass, we may do you honor? And the angel of Yahuwah said unto him, Why ask you thus after my name, seeing it is secret? So Manoach took a kid with an oblation and offered it upon a rock unto Yahuwah. And the angel did wondrously. And Manoach and his woman looked on. For it came to pass, when the flame went up toward the heaven from the altar, from off the altar, that the angel of Yahuwah ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoach and his woman looked at it, looked on it, and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of Yahuwah did no more appear to Manoach and to his woman. Then Manoach knew that he was an angel of Yahuwah. And Manoach said unto the woman, his woman, We shall surely die, because we have seen Elohim. But his woman said unto him, If Yahuwah was, were pleased to kill us, he would have not received an ascending smoke offering and an oblation at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would, as at this time, have told us such things as these. And the woman bore a son and called his name Shimshon, and the child grew, and Yahuwah blessed him. And the Ruach Yahuwah began to move him at times in the camp of Dan, between Sora and Ishtal.
Yeah, amen. Thank you so much, Hayden. Sorry, it took me a minute. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. So that's interesting. I mean, here we see the Natsir vow, which we read about in Numbers 6. And um, here we see it being uh, the vow that Yah said uh, Samson would be part of. And um, the point is that it, it was from before, it was from his mother, not from his mother's womb, um, that she would also uh, fall into this vow. Uh, while he was uh, while he was in a womb, uh, yeah, a very interesting chapter. Um, uh, from Dan, eh? From Dan. So uh, that was on the on the other side of the river, right? Or Dan's Dan's uh, inheritance, the the place that they chose was on the other side of Jordan. It wasn't in the promised land. So that's interesting as well. Uh, and then obviously Dan is the judge, right? So uh, it's fitting that uh, Shimshon came from Dan as well. Um, James, I don't know if you've got something there for us. I really enjoy that visual of the angel ascending up to heaven through the flames of the offering. You know, we know when Yaakov had the dream of the staircase, the angels ascending and descending, you know, it's referenced that the angels were given a task by Yah while they were sent to earth, you know, to dwell and to do things with man, given a, a, a task as as once it was completed, they were able to return. And I think we're seeing that happen here, maybe with this angel that was tasked with, you know, representing this portion of the Nazarite vow, explaining and, and le leading, explaining how this was to be done. And through that offering, he was then able to rise again back to heaven. Just a thought that kind of came to me, but uh, I really like that verse there. Yeah. Makes sense. Lovely. Well, um, then after this, we go to the Besorah. And Andrea is going to read us the Besorah portion for today. Um, so, Andrea, thank you. Yes. Uh, John chapter 7, verse 53. And every man went unto his own house. Chapter 8. Yahushua went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him. And he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the parashim brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Rabbi, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moshe in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what say you? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Yahushua stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he had heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Yahushua was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Yahushua had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those your accusers? Has no man condemned you? She said, No man, Adonai. And Yahushua said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Yeah, that's beautiful. Lovely piece of scripture of forgiveness, isn't it? Yes. And isn't it such a beautiful piece that we've written? Well, we've 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 added, if you like, in discussion, I have added faithfulness. So here we have unfaithfulness, but we have the love of Yah that's willing to forgive and willing to absolve. Isn't that such a marvelous thing? That yes. um, you know, we're talking about the woman, we're talking about Yasharel, maybe being the woman. We're talking about the people of Yah being the woman. Mm -hmm. 
and how they fall away and Yah is there to forgive. Yah is there to say, don't worry, go and sin no more. Um, Yah is there to say, uh, I do not condemn you. Uh, you know, amazing words, uh, because she was guilty of this. She was guilty. And then we see, obviously, him stooping the ground and writing. And then standing up and saying, you without sin cast the first stone. So we see there the stone, if you like, the hardness of the word, that that you can hurt people with. Right? We, we see that in, in um, chapter 11 of Luke, I believe. <coughs> when we see uh, the person knocking at the door and say, uh, which one of you being hungry um, asks of bread will give him a stone. And so, you know, there's, there's the word. There's the word that nourishes. There's the word that heals. There's the word that fills you, that, he, that, uh, that helps you to grow maybe. And then the stone, which is hard and the stone that is, um, that, that hurts that can hurt you. And, um, and here, here, here the people are using the stone that hurts. And Yah comes and gives her the forgiveness and the love which he is. And, uh, you know, such a beautiful contrast. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, what comes to mind is, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Don't you see it? Now it's springing up. Because in the law, they would have stoned her, but he, he, he's doing a new thing with the, with the good news, the Bessera, and it's about love, and it's about forgiveness, and it is Amen. beautiful. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And, you know, sorry, James, you carry on. I think we see Yahusha using their man-made doctrine against them. You know, it was tradition to write both guilty parties names uh, and here he's doing this yet the man wasn't present they were just trying to accuse the woman and so he's saying you know though whoever has no sin cast the first stone it really makes me wonder if he was writing all of their names in the sand because they were guilty as well they were without they were with sin and so at that point they realized they couldn't continue on in this witch hunt Correct. Yeah. You know, um, it will. So, so they were, they were trying to trap him with that part that we've just learned, read out of uh, numbers. They were trying to trap him uh, because that only pertains to the woman, that piece. And it doesn't really give you anything about the, the man, right? Um, but he knew that that is also, I suppose, Yasharel in general. And how they went off the track. Um, and then I think he was saying, listen, this is a bigger thing. Because you made out of dust. So when I write in this dust, I am, I am writing in what you are made out of. I made you. And are you, are you, are you greater than the maker? Are you, uh, can you turn, as we read a few weeks ago, can you turn one hair black or white? In other words, can you judge that you are clean or not? Because the, 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 their hair within the leprous spot determined if you, had, if you were clean or not. Uh, are you the priest that can determine these things? Um, so there's so many aspects to this, uh, to this, um, to this, to uh, this, thought that is such a blessing and uh, so we just uh, uh, we just love I, I mean this is the reason why we do this isn't it Jack? it's uh, it's that we 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 see all these lovely connections within the scripture that blesses us so so with that we just like to say Shabbat Shalom to everybody and thank you for joining us and let us quickly pray Father, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for the insight that you give us and the love 
that you show through your word to us, each one of us, Father, that there is redemption, there is love, there is forgiveness, and there's always repentance. And you are always there to forgive us and to love us and to, and to with arms wo- wide open, to receive us. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for everybody that has listened to this message. May you bless them richly in the knowledge of you. Amen and amen. And Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.